Sansa, he had the tully coloring, the auburn hair, the blue eyes. Yet now for the first time she saw something of Eddard Stark in his face, something as stern and hard as the North. What am I doing? She echoed, puzzled. How can you ask that? What do you imagine him doing? I am taking care of your brother. I am taking care of Bran. Is that what you call it? You haven't left this room since Bran was hurt. You didn't even come to the gate when father and the girls went south. I said my farewells to them here, and watched them right out from that window. She. Had begged Ned not to go, not now, not after what had happened. Everything had changed now, cold he see that? It was no use. He had no choice, he had told her, and then he left, choosing. I can't leave him, even for a moment, not when any moment could be his last. I have to be with him, if... If... She took her son's limp hand, sliding his fingers through her own. He was so frail and thin, with no strength left in his hand. But she could still feel the warmth of life through his skin. Rob's voice softened. Who's not going to die, mother? Master Lewin says the time of greatest danger has passed. And what if Mr. Lewin is wrong? What if Bran needs me and I'm not here? Rickon needs you, Rob said sharply. Has only three, he doesn't understand what's happening. He thinks everyone has deserted him, so he follows me around all day, clutching my leg and crying. I don't know what to do with him. He paused a moment, chewing on his lower lip the way H.E.T. done when he was little. Mother, I need you too. I'm trying but I can't. I can't do it all by myself. His voice broke with sudden emotion, and Catelyn remembered that he was only 14. She wanted to get up and go to him, but Bran was still holding her hand and she could not move. You may. Septa Morton helped herself to more bread and honey, and Sansa slid from the bench. Lady followed at her heels as she ran from the inn's common room. Outside, she stood for a moment amidst the shouts and curses and the creak of wooden wheels as the men broke down the tents and pavilions and loaded the wagons for another day's march. The inn was a sprawling three-story structure of pale stone, the biggest that Sansa had ever seen, but even so, it had accommodations for less than a third of the king's party, which had swollen to more than 400 with the addition of her father's household and the free riders who had joined them on the road. She found Arya on the banks of the Trident, trying to hold Nymeria still while she brushed dried mud from her fur. The dear wolf was not enjoying the process. Arya was wearing the same riding leathers she had worn yesterday and the day before. You better put on something pretty, Sansa told her. Septimorton said so. Were traveling in the Queen's wheelhouse with Princess Myrcella today. I'm not, Arya said, trying to brush a tangle out of Nymeria's matted gray fur. Micah. And I are going to ride upstream and look for rubies at the ford. Rubies, Sansa said, lost. What rubies? Arya gave her a look like she was so stupid. Rager's rubies. This is where King Robert killed him and won the crown. Sansa regarded her scrawny little sister in disbelief. You can't look for rubies, the princess is expecting us. The queen invited us both. I don't care, Arya said. The wheelhouse doesn't even have windows, you can't see a thing. What could you want to see? Sansa said, annoyed. She had been thrilled by the Invitation, 
and her stupid sister was going to ruin everything, just as she had feared. It's. All just fields and farms and whole fasts. It is not, Arya said stubbornly. If you came with us sometimes, you'd see. I hate riding, Sansa said fervently. All it does is get you soiled and dusty and sore. Arya shrugged. Hold still, she snapped at Nymeria, I'm not hurting you. Then too. Sansa she said, when we were crossing the neck, I counted 36 flowers I never saw before, and Micah showed me a lizard lion. Sansa shuddered. They had been twelve days crossing the neck, rumbling down a crooked causeway through an endless black bog, and she had hated every moment of it. The air had been damp and clammy, the causeway so narrow they could not even make proper camp at night, they had to stop right on the king road. Dense thickets of half drowned. Trees pressed close around them, branches dripping with curtains of pale fungus. Huge flowers bloomed in the mud and floated on pools of stagnant water, but if you were stupid enough to leave the causeway to pluck them, there were quicksands waiting to suck you down, and snakes watching from the trees, and lizard lions floating half submerged in the water, like black logs with eyes and teeth. Found them. The room was crowded when he burst in. Too crowded, he thought. Left. Alone, he and Robert might have been able to settle the matter amicably. Robert was slumped in Dari's high seat at the far end of the room, his face closed and sullen. Cursail Annister and her son stood beside him. The queen had her hand on. Joffrey's shoulder. Thick silken bandages still covered the boy's arm. Arya stood in the center of the room, alone but for a jewelry castle, every eye upon her. Arya, Ned called loudly. He went to her, his boots ringing on the stone floor. When she saw him, she cried out and began to sob. Ned went to one knee and took her in his arms. She was shaking. I'm sorry, she sobbed. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know, he said. She felt so tiny in his arms, nothing but a scrawny little girl. It was hard to see how she had caused so much trouble. Are you hurt? No. Her face was dirty and her tears left pink tracks down her cheeks. Hungry some. I ate some berries, but there was nothing else. We'll feed you soon enough, Ned promised. He rose to face the king. What is the meaning of this? His eyes swept the room, searching for friendly faces. But for his own. Men, they were few enough. Sir Raymond Derry guarded his look well. Lord Greenley wore a half smile that might mean anything, and old Sir Baristan was grave. The rest were Lannister men, and hostile. Their only good fortune was that both Jaime Lannister and Sandra Cligan were missing, leading searches north of the Trident. Why was I not told? That my daughter had been found? Ned demanded, his voice ringing. Why was she not? Brought to me at once. He spoke to Robert, but it was Cursail Lannister who answered. How dare you speak to? Your king in that manner. 